Juneteenth is now a federal holiday and celebrations are taking place across the country and right here in the Northwest Metro. Juneteenth is June 19th, marking the day that news of the Emancipation Proclamation freeing slaves reached the state of Texas. A Golden Valley resident is sponsoring the first annual Sweet Potato Comfort Pie Jubilee to mark the occasion. Reporter Sonny Goins has the details. I'm at Western Sculpture Park in St. Paul, where Golden Valley resident Rose McGee is hosting her Jubilee. She says she wants to celebrate the holiday by uplifting the community. Friday's event is in partnership with the 25th Annual Community of Peace Celebration. People got to check out an exhibit that honors 16 community members who have received comfort pies for their work in promoting peace. Our community is under a lot of stress and duress and pain. Every day we hear something different. And it's not just here, but we have to respond to home, right? But these incidents are happening all over and we just need a respite. We need some hope. And that's the purpose of today. Since 2014, McGee has been using her sweet potato comfort pies, what she calls the sacred dessert of black culture as a catalyst for building community and starting important conversation about racial justice. Sonia Goins, CCX News. A Juneteenth event will also take place Sunday in Robbinsdale. The event, hosted by the group Robbinsdale for Racial Justice, includes music, other activities, and food. It takes place from 2 to 5 p.m. Sunday at Sanborn Park. Maple Grove's fire department is now better equipped to handle a water rescue should the need arise. The city recently acquired two new boats for ice and water rescue missions. One is an 18-foot aluminum rescue boat with a dive rescue platform. And the other is a 14-foot inflatable Zodiac boat, which is designed for getting onto bodies of water without an easy access point. Maple Grove now is well prepared for any type of emergency. And with these boats, we can respond to any type of water emergency, whether it's on one of our rivers, creeks, or at a big major boat landing. We can respond quickly and efficiently, deploy the vessels, get that crew out there. These watercraft replace boats that the fire department has used since the 1980s. In the 64 year history of the Three Rivers Park District, no one has achieved the milestone reached by Gene Lau this week. The Maple Grove resident has been a volunteer fixture for the past 33 years, and he shows no signs of slowing down. More than 27,000 acres of parks and trails make up the Three Rivers Park System. And when you have an area that large, I see what we got in here. it requires a few good volunteers. These are young tree swallows. They'll probably fledge out in about a week. And no one has been more generous with their time than Gene Lau of Maple Grove. You know, it's nice to get out of the house and do something, get active, and get to have something to do. Otherwise, you're just going to... You're just going to waste away. Gene spent a recent afternoon checking on birdhouses near Eagle Lake. It's a chickadee nest. It's just one of many projects he's done for the park district since he started volunteering in 1988. That's a short list of volunteers that just, I have a random project. Who would be good on short notice, reliable, I can get along with, can just go out there and get it done, and that's... That's Gene. High praise for someone with a 33-year track record of reliability. But it's well deserved, especially considering that this month, Gene reached the unprecedented milestone of 10,000 volunteer hours. And that wasn't my goal, is to accumulate hours, but it's just, I was doing something I liked and my wife was happy with me being gone. All joking aside, Gene says that his love of nature and his eagerness to share his knowledge with others have made the entire experience worthwhile. It's hopefully, I've been able to reach people and to, and to teach them something. That's what I want to take out of this. Three Rivers wants to reward Gene with a little more than personal satisfaction. We want to go above and beyond, and we've offered him some a few little options of things that he could do in the park district, and one of those is to go up with one of our biologists um, to help with a deer count survey in the winter. So that is done by a helicopter. A fitting tribute for this 78-year-old volunteer who soars above the rest and has no plans of stopping anytime soon. As long as they'll have me, I'll keep doing it. 
Finally, this segment, live entertainment returns to the town green in Maple Grove in a big way. Neil Persley has details in today's weekend showcase. This summer, Cross Community players have taken the big stage to present a big performance of Mamma Mia at the Town Green in Maple Grove. So great to be back, and I just can't wait to share the gift of live theater with other people. Rebecca Rand plays Sophie in this fun, family-friendly musical. Sophie is preparing to get married, and uh, in preparation, she decides that she is going to invite her dad to her wedding so that uh, she can have the proper wedding and have her dad walk her down the aisle. The only problem is she doesn't know who her dad is. The show is driven by strong female characters. Do you see four very different women be very successful in their own ways, and, and they all support each other regardless of what decisions they made in their life. The musical has been around since 1999 and is the perfect vehicle for many great songs from the Swedish pop group ABBA. The title coming from their 1975 chart topper, Mamma Mia. There are 27 songs in our production, so some people might look at it as a concert. Uh, but behind that, we have a, a beautiful message, a beautiful story of love and self-sacrifice and dedication. Speaking of music, the band is really great and the choreography by Anne-Marie Omish from Escalate Dance and Theater Studio is fantastic as well. I promise, even if you're a casual fan of ABBA, the show will not disappoint. For Weekend Showcase in Maple Grove, Neil Persley, CCX News. I'm John Jacobson with sports. It's a busy week as spring sports for 2021 wrap up with five state competitions this week. The Maple Grove boys golf team was ranked number one in the state in class 3A coming into the postseason. And as Jason Malillo reports, the Crimson lived up to that billing at the state tournament. Day two of the class 3A boys state golf tournament at Bunker Hills. Armstrong's Evan Dimmich with a great read on this putt on West nine and he just misses. Dimmich finishes in 25th place. Champlain Park's Noah Visner has a rough tournament but makes a really nice birdie putt here on East 5. He finishes 59th. Wyzetta's Wyatt Carlson, nice touch from the fringe on East 5. He would par the hole and finishes in 41st place. Maple Grove's Josh Galvin rolls the birdie putt on West number 1 as the Crimson battles for the team title. Henry Nelson with a pretty birdie putt for the Crimson on West 5. He cards a 152 for the tournament. Grove freshman Ryan Stendahl's approach shot on West 5 just skips over the hole. He would two putt for par and cards a 148 for the tournament. William Carcoke strokes the par putt for the Crimson on West 8. His score is 150. On West 9, MG senior Lucas Federal finishes with a par to score 149 for the tournament. Galvin is the man for the Crimson though. The long birdie putt on West 9 nearly drops. Galvin finishes in a tie for fourth place, shooting a 140 for the tournament. And the Crimson beats Edina for the team title, winning by 16 strokes. Well, to come into today, we were three shots back. So we had to go, okay, this is up to everyone. And all year, it was everyone. It was all year, the six guy came through, the five guy came through, and you know the four guy came through instead of the one and two and three guys who normally would come through anyways. But some days, it didn't turn out that way, and we, re we relied on the whole team. And today it was a whole team effort, and it was awesome. It's really the only thing I pictured. I didn't picture getting second, I didn't picture getting third. It's the only thing. And uh, to bring two titles to Maple Grove was pretty sweet, because we never really had success in state and until our two state teams in these last couple of years. Jason Malillo, CCX Sports. Maple Grove's girls golf team also made a bid for a state title and several local schools had individuals in the Class 3A tournament. Here's Jay Wilcox with highlights from the final round of that tourney. Lauren Contreras tees off for Maple Grove on day two of the state Class 3A girls golf tournament. Her Crimson team leading by two shots coming in. Sachi Deshmuk of Wyzetta rolls home the par putt on East 9 at Bunker Hills. 
She places 29th with a two-round total of 161. Taylor Ullen of Champlin Park delivers a nice chip on West 9 to within a foot of the hole. Ullen cools after a first round 78, but ties for 35th with the 164 total. Amelia Morton of Maple Grove putting on West 3. Somehow it circles the cup and spins out. Morton taps in for par. She ties for 20th at 159 and is second on her team. Crimson senior Jordan Lamker battled back from a knee injury to compete in the postseason. Her putt is just short on West 8. Lamker taps it in and she ties for 68th place. Sophomore Julia Contreras of Maple Grove completes the tournament in style on West 9 as she sinks the long par putt. Contreras ties for 41st place. Senior Lauren Contreras sinks the long putt for birdie on East 9. She cards a 79 on day two after an opening round 74 to place 12th, best among local players. Maple Grove finishes second as a team, 22 shots back of Alexandria in their first state appearance. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. That's it for sports. I'm John Jacobson. For more state tournament stories, visit our website at ccxmedia.org. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.